So in my most recent video, I discussed the scenario of Activision uh, issuing cease and desist letters for developers of the most popular modded clients for older Call of Duty games. Well, looks like Nintendo has decided to jump on a similar bandwagon, given Nintendo has always been strict on these kinds of things. And now they've decided to put the GameCube and Wii emulator Project Dolphin in their sights. For those who don't know or have never used the software, Dolphin is an emulating software that can be used on most PCs to emulate GameCube games and Wii games. And it is a great way for folks who want to relive memories of older games and may not have access to the older consoles or the older games as they are no longer in production and can be hard to get your hands on and or expensive. Unfortunately, goodwill only goes so far with large companies who want to protect their properties and their IPs, which is understandable, howbeit annoying. But Nintendo has issued a DMCA notice to Valve themselves to block a Steam release of this emulation software. I have a snippet here from the PC Gamer article I will have linked in the description. On Friday, the developers behind open source GameCube and Wii emulator Dolphin received a DMCA takedown notice from Nintendo blocking Dolphin's impending release on Steam. The development team launched a Steam page on March 28th and announced it on the Dolphin blog, writing, quote, We're pleased to finally tell the world of our experiment. This has been the product of many months of work, and we look forward to getting it into users' hands soon, end quote. The legal notice, reviewed by PC Gamer, is addressed to Valve's legal department and dated May 26th, 2023. So, like I said, Nintendo's reaction to this doesn't surprise me in the slightest. Of all the companies, Nintendo has always been the most strict and the most frustrating to deal with in terms of preserving older games. They make it very difficult for folks who want to enjoy older games that are no longer being produced, and they make it extremely difficult to play them legitimately leading a lot of folks, including myself, who I personally use Dolphin, I use MGBA, I use Desume to play Nintendo DS games. It can be very hard to find copies of these games for a cheap price. I don't want to pay $300 for a DS game I had when I was 8. It's easier to emulate it. Now, Nintendo's reasoning they have to back them is mentioning the Digital Millennium Copyright Act, or DMCA, and the anti-circumvention and anti-trafficking provisions, 17 U.S.C. and 1201. Now, these are just laws and legislations they're using to back their idea of protecting intellectual property rights, which, again, they have every right to do. Doesn't mean we can't not like it. Now, to play devil's advocate, there's always the argument that a company, like recently with Activision, uh, axing most of those modded clients, the argument from most faithfuls to the company is that they're planning on making a re-release soon, or maybe they're going to put the old games on Game Pass, or they're going to remaster those games. They don't want competition from their market, which, in a business standpoint, does make sense. Do I think they're going to do that? No, I think if they were to put older games on the Game Pass, they would still have the same security problems and stability issues. But with Nintendo, they do have a track record of remastering older games. For example, when I first got Dolphin on my PC, the very first game I downloaded to emulate was Metroid Prime, because I absolutely adored the first Metroid Prime. And a year later, they announced a remaster. So it goes to show that Nintendo, more than anyone, is willing to remaster the older games. It's just when, where, and how well. Now, the Metroid Prime remaster, I did play it, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. I thought the quality of life changes were good. But there's still something special about playing the original copy on the original software, right? I did go out and find a Wii for me, my wife, and our future child now uh, to enjoy those games in an easier way. Because it's a little harder to replicate the Wii given that you might not have Wiimote controls. It's easier just to go out and find one. So we're going to take care of our Wii as long as we can. It hopefully doesn't break on us. But... It's going to get more and more difficult as time goes on for the GameCube, the PS2, the original Xbox, the first PlayStation, the Wii, even now the PS3 and 360. It's going to continue to get harder and harder for folks who played these games to go back and enjoy these games because they're no longer being produced, they're no longer being supported, and they're getting expensive. 
Now, when it comes to the Steam release of this software, I was as surprised as anyone to see it be put into that public of a form. A lot of people in my little gaming space and all over the years were aware of what Dolphin was. They're aware of what emulation is, but a lot of them did get into it because they thought it was too complicated. Just like a lot of folks are scared to get into PC gaming, scared to build one. There's a certain amount of intimidation and gatekeeping when it comes to it. So I was very surprised that they were going to do a public launch of this software on Steam, no less, with Valve's blessing. I had a feeling it would ruffle some feathers, and it looks like I was right. I didn't know how long it would take, but it looks like it didn't take too long before Nintendo's sights were set on them. But again, this whole scenario just keeps playing back into the issue of media preservation. It's going to be almost impossible to find a working copy of Pokemon Red or Pokemon Blue for the Game Boy Color. Not only are those game cartridges no longer produced, the batteries they use to save die all the time. They don't last very long, so you can't even save your progress correctly. So the best way, if you haven't purchased Pokemon Red or Blue on a virtual console like the Nintendo 3DS, which had its store shut down, which leads to more lost media that cannot be preserved. Emulation is, quite honestly, the only right way to preserve the games. Now, thankfully, emulation across the board isn't being targeted. It seems to have found this happy medium where most companies are okay with it because they realize that they're not charging for it. There's no one making any money away from their market. There's no one taking players from them. Most of the time, People who emulate are just folks who want to play a game they no longer have access to. And it's mostly out of passion and love for those older titles. And hopefully, maybe companies will pay more attention to which games are emulated the most often and will go out of their way because it's a lot of money you're leaving on the table to not remaster older games that clearly people want to play again. The Metroid Prime Remaster was a prime example. Everyone loves the first Metroid Prime, whoever played it. And remastering it was a genius idea because the GameCube is no longer in production. The Wii is no longer in production. It's very hard to find a copy of Metroid Prime for GameCube for less than $100 now. And if you wanted the Metroid Prime trilogy for the Wii, well, you might as well start investing in crypto because you're going to get big in that before you find one of those. But we'll have to see how this shakes out. Maybe Nintendo and Valve can come to some sort of agreement where they can ensure that there won't be any IP rights issues, and maybe we will see more emulation software in a more public forum on platforms like Steam. But who knows? Let me know what you guys think. Thank you for listening, and have a good one.